<laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Well, you can be seated. You need to learn how to praise. Hallelujah. You know, uh, there are more times than you can imagine that I have been delivered through praise. It seems like, you know, many times when you're under attack and you can't think of anything, your mind just goes, if you praise, if you'll just praise him. I learned it so many years ago. You know, we were teaching faith, preaching faith, preaching and teaching about healing. And uh, I got under physical attack. And uh, I'll never forget it. Pastor, Pastor Dorothy, you know, I told her, I, I, I don't even know what it was. I didn't know what it was at the time. But uh, we had renewed our vows. And that night, Pastor Nikki and I both got under attack. And uh, was laying in the motel room. And uh, I was just all curled up in a ball. And I told Pastor Dorothy. And at that time, uh, we didn't believe in going to doctors. We didn't believe in medicine, any of that. And uh, we just believed in faith. You know, you just believe faith. You don't need the doctor. Well, I found out that it's not a lack of faith to use a doctor. But at that time, that's what we believed. When I told her, I said, uh, call an ambulance and get me to the hospital. She says, I'm not going to do that. I said, you don't understand. Now, here's a good confession. You, know, you all understand confession, right? I said, I'm dying. And she said, well, that's your confession. I believe every word of it. I'm going to sleep. Go ahead and die. And I remembered, all right, I'm going to show you. I'm just going to lay here and die then. Because she wouldn't call an ambulance. I mean, you talk about a woman that you want, want around when you're under attack, I'll tell you. And so I just said, all right, Lord, I'm going to lay here and die. But before I die, I just want to thank you for that time that me and the kids fell through the ice and you saved our lives and we didn't freeze to death. I just want to thank you, Lord, for that time that Pastor Nikki had that 105 fever and we were snowed in and couldn't get her to the doctor or the hospital. I said, I want to thank you for taking that fever away from her. I want to thank you, Lord, that time that our house caught on fire and we were snowed in and the fire department said they couldn't get back there to put the fire out. We watched our house burn. But then all of a sudden, the fire department was there and they put the fire out and not even, it didn't even smell like smoke. And then the firemen looked around and said, we don't know how we got here. And they got stuck in the yard and they couldn't get out. And I want to thank you, Lord, for all the miracles and all the finances that you brought us through. And I went to sleep praising God. Woke up totally healed. Now, that doesn't sound like maybe that big of a deal, but it was such a severe attack. We found out later in the paper, there were, and I can't remember the number. Uh, Larry and I were just talking about this a couple weeks ago. I think there was 100,000, I don't remember the number. Several thousand people died that weekend of cholera. And that's what it was that we were under attack from. Guys, you know, when, when we were, fell through that ice and we couldn't think of anything to do, but we were going to go out praising God. Amen? And we've learned so much since then. And so, guys, when you cut to church, don't just sing a song. Don't just let Pastor Dorothy get up there and entertain you. This is worship to the Most High God. He's my deliverer. He's my redeemer. He's my savior. Do those words mean anything to you? He saved you from death, hell, and destruction. He saved you from hell. He saved you from the curse of the law. He saved you from torment. You've got something on the inside of you that other people don't have. Oh, glory to God. You've got something on the inside living on the outside. Glory to God. 
Oh, what a praise. What a, what a time to praise him. When you can't think of anything else to do, when your back is against the wall, just praise him. Just adore him. Just worship him. And every song, every song that pastor picks out is for a reason. It's to take you from this level where we are to get you to praising and worshiping him. And you cannot outpraise anybody. I mean, just get rid of everybody around you. This is personal between you and him. And when you learn to praise him, that's when the mighty move of God is going to happen in your life. He builds his habitation around the praises of his people. He loves to be praised. He loves to be worshipped for what he is and who he is. What he's done in your life. You adore him. Hallelujah. Every day you should thank God for the things that you know and the things that you have. Because the Bible says that there are many religious people that desire to know what you know and to have what you have. And they can't see it. They can't understand it. There are many people in the world that don't understand why you're even in church tonight. They don't get it. I'm here because I'm worshiping my King of Kings, my Lord of Lords, my Master, my Savior. Hallelujah. When the Red Sea's in front of me and Pharaoh's behind me, and the desert's on one side and the mountains are on the other, if I lift up my hands and I praise him, I know that my deliverer will split that Red Sea and I'll go across on dry ground. I know that my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. I know that he's my Savior. He's my Redeemer. He's my Rosa Sharon. He's the, my bright morning star. Hallelujah. He's the great I am, the way, the truth, the life, and the door. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can I have a praise to him tonight? Oh, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You get to the point where you're praising him. Many people don't understand uh, uh, the infilling of the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. They don't understand that when you get so saturated with the mighty presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. And you just run out of English words to praise him. All of a sudden, up on the inside of you, oh, you just begin to praise him in the spirit. Worship him in the spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Mm. Many people don't understand the power of praise. Hallelujah. But do you realize that you are kings and priests unto God, that you don't have to wait for a priest to go into the presence of God for you. You can walk right into the holy of holies yourself without the sense of guilt, without the sense of shame, without the inferiority complex. You can worship him, glory to God. He's just waiting for you to come. Hallelujah. Get from that outer courtyard. Get from that outer world system. Get into the inner court. and Get into that most holy place. Hallelujah. When you get in there, oh, glory to God. It, it, it'll just seem like a, just a few minutes and maybe hours have gone by. Hallelujah. And you'll come out just saturated with the presence of God. That's how Moses ended up on Mount Sinai for 40, 40 uh, days. Hallelujah. When he came down from Mount Sinai, Oh my goodness, the Bible says he had to put a veil over his face because the people couldn't look at him. <laughs> glory to God. Like bolt of lightning were coming out of his eyes because of the glory of God. Woo! Can you imagine walking into a, a place, oh glory to God, walking into Walmart, and as you, the greeter comes over to greet you, she just falls over on the floor. <laughs> glory to God. Can you just imagine the boldness of the Holy Ghost? You walk into Walmart one day and you just go over to the, get over to the customer care and you get the microphone and say, in 30 minutes we're going to have a, a healing service at the front of Walmart. Anybody needs healing, get up here. Hallelujah. People will know the presence of God is in this place. Hallelujah. you all bring a Bible tonight? Grab your Bible, everybody. Lift your Bible with me. Say this out loud. This is my Bible. I have what it says I can have. 
I do what it says I can do. I am what it says I am. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living, ever-producing seed of the living God. Father, I confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive and my body's awake. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll never be the same. I'll never, 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 never be the same in Jesus' name. Well, I may have to share this in other tongues tonight. I don't we started a, a series studying about the blessing of the Lord. We're going to you know, go through some basic scriptures that we went through before and do a little bit of review. So turn to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. In Proverbs 10, 22. And then we'll go to Galatians 3, 13. I'd like you to turn in your Bible. I'd like you to see these in your Bible if you can, or at least highlight them. And, and study this out and uh, let this become a revelation to you. In Proverbs 10, 22... It says, the blessing. Everybody say, the blessing. the blessing. It's the blessing of the Lord. It makes rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. So it's the blessing of the Lord. It's the blessing pack. I read a, a book by Oral Roberts years ago, and I didn't understand it until just recently. It was called The Blessing Pack. My goodness, I'd, li I'd like to find that book now and go back and read it. Uh, you know, so many times we read things and we think we understand it, but we just surfacely get a hold of it. Galatians 3.13. Galatians. Now this is very important because you need to realize that because you have given your life to Jesus Christ, and you are a born-again Christian, you're a believer, you are a, a spiritual Jew. You are a Jew. You're not a natural-born Jew, but you are a spiritual Jew. There are two words for Jew uh, in, the, in the text in the uh, Greek and the Hebrew. One is technon, and one is weos. Technon is for the natural Jewish people. And weos is for spiritual Jew. So you are a weos. Okay? And again, I'm not speaking Klingon. Okay? This is uh, to help you identify the fact that you belong to the family of God. You're adopted in. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You need to study adoption sometime. When you're adopted in, bless God, that means you actually... Uh, have more benefits than a natural person in a, uh, a natural family. When you're adopted in, uh, your heirship is stronger than the natural children. So you're adopted in. Because you're adopted in, you have the same blessing that belong to spiritual or to natural Jews. So let's look at it here, Galatians 3.13. By this time, I trust that you have this highlighted. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on tree. Why did it, that happen? So that the blessing, everybody say the blessing. The blessing, the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, through Jesus Christ. Now, unless you were a natural-born Jew, you were a Gentile, okay? And now you're born again, you are a spiritual Jew. So, you are in uh, the family of Abraham. You're the children of Abraham. So that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we be, uh, might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now look at verse 29. This helps clarify it for you. If you be Christ, 
then are you Abraham's seed, and you are heirs according to the promise. You are heirs according to the promise. Amen. Now what I want to do right now is just, I want you to turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I want to read the blessings, the blessings that come with the blessing pact that was pronounced on, uh, on Abraham. This is a covenant. We're going to take a little time here. We're going to read all of this. I want to make sure that you have read this and you understand it. This belongs to you. And we'll read it from verse 1 through verse 14. If shall come to pass, if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you, if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind, the flocks of your sheep. Blessed shall be your basket and your store. Blessed shall you be when, when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They will come out against you one way, flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that you set your hand unto. He shall bless you in your land which the Lord shall give you. The Lord shall establish you a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou will keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth will see that you're called by the name of the Lord and they'll be afraid of you. And the Lord shall make you plenish in goods and in the fruit of your body. Guys, don't ever be embarrassed to walk in the blessing of the Lord. To have nice clothes and nice things. Don't be ashamed of it. You know, don't go buy a new car and be afraid to drive it to church because somebody will think you're stealing God's money or something. You know what? Let people talk. They're, they're talking about you anyway. So you just walk in the blessing and let them shut up. The Lord will make you plenteous in goods, the fruit of your body, the fruit of your cattle, and the fruit of your ground, the land which the Lord swears unto your fathers to give you. Verse 12, the Lord will open unto you good treasure, heaven to give rain in the land in the season, and to bless all the work of your hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, thou shalt not borrow. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou wilt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words that I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. I believe Pastor Dorothy tonight, if I heard her, uh, Speaking, she said, don't go to the left or the right. So the Lord is reminding you, you know what, it's not, it's not a, a, um, it's not a deterrent or it's not a problem. It shouldn't be a burden for you to follow the Lord. So many times we look at the world and we say, well, they're not serving God. They're, and look at them, they're blessed. No, guys, that's all they have. When it's done for them, it's over. Amen? And so don't ever be envious of the world. But you've got to understand something. I want you to see uh, something else. Turn over to Galatians, again, chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Now, I don't want you to get over there looking at all of the old... Uh, commandments and looking for that, trying to serve the old commandments. In Galatians chapter 5, looking at verse 14. 
For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I will say then, walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Guys, when we were in Ramah, Brother Hagen, you know, he told us at that time, you know, it had been like 50 years and he hadn't had a headache and he had walked in divine health. And, but he always reminded us of this. If you're under attack, check your love walk. Have you had your mouth on somebody? Have you been talking about somebody? And, I, and I've, got to be, I've got to be very, very tactful about this. Well, I can't be tactful about it. During the political campaigns and stuff, keep your mouth off these politicians. You know, watch the debates, but keep your mouth off the people. You don't have to agree with what they're running for. I don't care whether they're Democrat or Republican or what you believe. You don't have to agree with them. But don't get down on them. Don't be bad-mouthing them. And you have to forgive them. Amen? Uh, it, it's really, it, it, if you can't keep your mouth off of them, then turn the TV off. And I've had to do it. I, I, you know what? I want to walk in health. I want to walk in the joy of the Lord. I don't want to walk in, uh, the, under the curse. Amen? I want the blessing to be upon me. So I don't have time to get my mouth on you or anybody else. No matter what you do, amen, it's not my responsibility. Can I have an amen? amen. So walk in the, the revelation of that. Turn to Romans 13, 9. If you want to walk in the blessing, then it takes discipline. And, and one of the things that we need to do is to forgive people. Because we've all been abused by people. Amen. So look at this tonight. Romans 13, 9. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandments briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. So when you walk in love, you fulfill all of the law of the of Ten Commandments. Amen? Love works no ill to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn over to Matthew chapter 22. You want the blessing or the curse? Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 22. Look at verse 37. Now watch this. Verse 36, the disciples asked him this question. He said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. Can I have an amen? amen. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So I like to look at it like this. Love is the curtain rod, okay? And on this curtain rod hangs, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not commit adultery. All of the other commandments are hanging on that curtain rod, and that curtain rod is love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. If you don't stay in love with the Lord vertically, then horizontally you're going to get upset at one another. You're going to get irritated at one another. You're going to get frustrated with one another. But when you walk in the love with the Lord, all of a sudden what other people are doing, it doesn't seem to irritate you quite as much. It doesn't seem to matter. Are you listening to me? 
Why? Because you're just so saturated with the love of God. You say, oh, bless them, Lord. Oh, bless their darling heart and stupid head. <laughs> you know, they don't know what they're doing. I mean, you know, when, even when people get their mouth all over you, I mean, you know, you want, you want to strike back at them. Well, why? Well, because you're not staying in love. Amen? How could they possibly speak bad about me? I mean, I'm such a nice guy. You're such a nice person. You don't mean anything evil about anybody. Right? So just be nice. Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 8. If you fulfill the royal law of love according to the scripture, thou shalt love the neighbor as yourself, you do well. If you do that, if you work on that, amen, just work on that in your life. And you shouldn't have time to even be picking at anything I'm doing. If you've got yourself perfect, then uh, I guess you need to teach us all how to do it. When you get yourself perfect. But until that time, you shouldn't be pr criticizing anything I do. Because you don't know what, how you... Well, yeah, but pastor, if I would have been in that situation, I wouldn't have done that. You don't know what you would have done. Are you serious? You don't know what you would have done if you, until you're in that situation. Amen? And if you're not full of the Holy Ghost, you'll probably do something stupid anyway. Turn over to uh, Genesis chapter 1 and we'll close this down for tonight. Y'all getting anything out of this? Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 26. This is when the uh, blessing was pronounced upon the human race. Okay? Starting in verse 26. God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And now verse 28. Now this is verse 26 and verse 27 is where God was planning it and putting it all together. God the Holy Spirit, God the Son, and uh, God the Father. But then in verse 28, after God created them, this is where he spoke to them, the blessing. And God blessed them. He empowered them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And that, that's the blessing of the Lord. And that went to Adam and Eve. And then we studied it, went, to, uh, went right on down. We studied Joseph. We studied Isaac. We studied, we, did we study Abraham? We'll study Abraham a little bit more maybe. And, and it went right past, right on down to us. Glory to God. Now the thing that happened is there a, a devil came into this earth. Amen. And he's trying to block that. And we may talk about blessing blockers that stop the blessings from coming upon us. Amen? And that way we can handle it. We can put that shield of faith up there. We can stop and block those blessings from coming. And so know this, that when you're under attack, guys, it's the devil trying to steal the blessing from you. Amen? Glory to God. We have the dominion. We have the authority. We have the power. 
Glory to God, it's been given to us. You'll find out. Uh, we'll study Abraham. I didn't get that far tonight. That uh, when, when uh, Melchizedek pronounced the blessing upon Abraham, he called Abraham the possessor of heaven and earth and pronounced that blessing upon him. You are the possessor of heaven and earth. Amen. Well, yeah, but pastor, no, there's no buts. There's no buts. I am. And so I'm walking by faith and not by sight, and I'm overcoming. Amen. I'm doing better now than I did the other day. I'm doing now better than I did a year ago or two years ago. I've had some temporary setbacks. Well, temporary setbacks, you can rebuild the broken down walls of human life. Stand on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Glory to God. So learn to praise Him. Learn to worship Him. Learn to adore Him. Hallelujah. The blessings that belong to you and I. Hallelujah. Will come on us and overtake us. Glory to God. No matter where you go, that blessing follows you. Hallelujah. Well, you ought to give Him praise. Woo! Glory, glory, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship is to our God. Hallelujah. You're dismissed. Come join us at New Beginnings Family Church, located in Mustang, Oklahoma, at 1615 East State Highway 152. You can find us online on Facebook and YouTube or at walkbyfaith.info. To contact us, call 405-261-6887. And remember, you don't need a second chance. You need a new beginning.